What's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and I got a cold, and this is another chance encounter. Hey, what's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg. I'm a commercial real estate guy. I'm from the internet. Our line today is kind of close. What's up again? This is Dan Fradenberg. That's as much energy as it can mess with muster today. How are you doing today, Claudia? Oh, thank you. How are you? Uh, well, you know, I'm a little rough around the edges, but what can you do? So, uh, so you're in Germany and you're a physician, you're from Chicago and, uh, you're, you're investing in that, uh, in that area. Um, do you want to uh, introduce yourself real quick? Yeah. So, um, I, I was also a veteran, so I actually served in the army for seven years, um, worked in the medical field. And when, when I separate, separated last year, um, my husband got orders to come to Germany and he's stationed here now. So we're here for the next two years until he retires. And then we go back home to our home of record, which is Illinois. And while we're out here, my focus is long distance real estate investing in our um, in Illinois. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So the first segment that uh, we do here in these chance encounters is I pull up my screen right there and then I lean more this way because and remember that it's over there. And uh, I go through the motivations. I've got the motivations to be part of an apartment complex, like, like, like the, the team that takes down the deal. Uh, I've got them down to five different motivations. And I should use my right hand because it's not blocked. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's down to five different motivations. And at the bottom of the screen, I have the roles. I'll get to that later. But I just found that a lot of beginners, you know, they knew their motivation, but they didn't know the role that they'd likely take. So the first one, uh, that's not how I do it. I do this. There we go. The first reason is to preserve purchasing power. So uh, in my mind, that best describes the people who have a family office. Basically, you know, they're not working class. They've got a nest egg of wealth that they use to uh, get cash flow so that, um, you know, basically paying attention to the assets is all that they do. That's the first one, preserve purchasing power. The next one is my one, which is I'm, uh, I'm trading time for wealth. So uh, as a high earner, you know, you can definitely feel me as this uh, as a physician. But uh, if you do end up getting a high salary, then you're going to be also paying very high income tax. And so me, I'm taking my tech skills and putting them into uh, these teams so that we're doing the marketing together. I'm contributing in that way, but I'm getting paid back in the form of wealth instead of um, uh, just regular cash uh, yeah, income. So the next one is uh, they want to fa fast track the retirement. Basically, uh, I'd say fast tracking the retirement, the point of that one, separate from preserving purchasing power, because obviously if you have a nest egg, you're trying to preserve your purchasing power. Uh, the big difference is what's the, what's the goal here? What's the, where's the end line as far as like, when is it, you know, like, okay, I don't need any more buildings. I don't need any more. So these aren't the super duper ambitious piece of people necessarily, but the ones who are, are the ones who want to buy their entire hometown. They're just super ambitious and they'll never stop until they're, you know, a billionaire several times over. So of course that's handy for, for us in the co GP team, because at least, you know, that the person's not going to become an accredited investor and just basically wash their hands uh, of the of the property. The uh, last one is an irrational need to help tenants. And what I mean by that is there's some sort of sector of society that you want to build your wealth so that you can support that cause. So I call it irrational here. And that doesn't necessarily mean like a bad thing. All I mean is it's not really just the typical reason of of uh, squeezing every penny of profit out that you possibly can. So out of those five, which of those motivations resonate with you the most, Claudia? I think there's so many benefits to real estate, um, you know, like trading your time for wealth and uh, being able to take advantage of those uh, tax benefits are really appealing. Um, but, oh, the, you know, you mentioned irrational need to help people. But um, for for me, like a long, a long term vision, my husband's in active duty army, I'm a veteran, our long term vision is actually to help homeless, the cause of homeless veterans, and somehow merge um, housing, like real estate housing, with the the, the voucher through hot badge, a housing authority um, program that they have, and somehow merge those two and offer housing for homeless veterans. So, you know, you say irrational, but <laughs> to us, it's very like, 
rash, you know, for us, it's a, it's a very like a passionate like cause that we eventually want to contribute to. And we, you know, I, doing it through real estate, um, just the benefits real real estate eventually leading us to help others. I think that's also a motivator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it has to be. You have to have something to, you know, take you past. It's like, okay, well, I, I call it the Forrest Gump thing. You know, it's like, well, I got this far. Might as well keep mm -hmm. going, you know, that kind of thing, right? It's, uh, but part of what I'm up to is just, I think that um, uh, emotions are a tough thing for some people to get their heads around when they're over logical. And then if they're overly emotional, then the logic's kind of tough. So if I'm bringing up the term irrational, then it, it kind of gets that, that idea across. Uh, as far as that, um, you know, there's basically emotions have a seat at every table is, is what I'm really saying. But all right. So the next segment, though, I go through the six different roles in an apartment complex deal. I generally start with the repositioner one. This is kind of handy having the steering wheel here. So I got a place to put it and this is stable. So a repositioner is somebody who looks at a whole whack of different properties and they have to underwrite them for sure. But they're looking for ones with an upside. You know, ones where they can make more money and they can get it at a decent price. In other words, make more money than it is already. So if you're going to be a repositioner, though, especially if you're from the Internet like me, you're going to need an operations person. So somebody's got to run it and it's got to be me. There, they can't be me is what I'm saying. So uh, I've got the Benjamins going down the toilet there because uh, there's there's a few different uh, uh, things inside operations that aren't so obvious, right? Like, you know, how water efficiency uh, is one of the things that can make an upside for the repositioner and the team. Uh, but of course, right now we're in the hottest real estate market in history. So uh, operations on its own, more efficient operations on its own, probably won't give enough upside. So a lot of people are getting a contractor and getting them getting the apartment units all fixed up and then that way people will pay more in rent uh for the uh for the units but there's a problem since i'm a digital security guy you know or at least that's what my background is uh, i realize that everything can be sloughed so the contractor can email me some photos that have nothing to do with what's going on the operations can do the same thing so you need a local you need somebody who can be there in an hour, you know, do spot checks, all that kind of stuff, or, or do the things that, uh, you know, figure out, it's like, okay, is this contractor any good? Are they cutting corners? All that sort of stuff. So that's more of the day-to-day -day, uh, a part of, uh, of the equation. And the next part is the financier, the bank. You go to the bank and you say, hey, okay, this building really rocks. I know how to make this happen. I've got my entire team. So lend me a whole whack of cash so I can buy it. They'll say, yeah, but who's your sponsor? So if you want to buy an apartment complex, you have to have somebody in the fold, at least if you want to get a loan, you have to have somebody in the fold who has a, a similar asset. So Elon Musk is one of the richest people on earth, but if he wants to buy a 350 uh, unit apartment complex, he has to have somebody on his team who already owns a 350 unit complex or else he can't get the loan. So, uh, so that's what they're for, but you also need within the, uh, the GPKP team, you have to have a net worth of at least the uh, the value of the loan. So those are the six different roles. And out of these, uh, which are your core competencies? I guess since you're remote, you're also looking at a lot of deals and underwriting, right? Yes, that's that's primarily now. And you know, you're right. It does definitely take a team. It really takes you know, um, bringing multiple uh, assets together. And uh, for me, being remote right now would be your positioning and underwriting looking for um, force appreciation, right? Trying to figure out how to make the properties work, work for you. And um, yeah, most definitely that would be more in my, my area right now. Excellent. Excellent. And so uh, uh, right now, uh, do you have uh, a, a preferred unit count or a geographic area that, uh, that you are specifically uh, interested in as far as apartment complex deals or, or other co uh, commercial real estate deals as well? If you're so open? I'm actually looking at, at like small multi-unit um uh like buildings uh and trying to follow a model that would work to help homeless veterans in in my market so my i know my market a little bit better because it the housing voucher for homeless veterans it works differently in different states there are different benefits so it's it's very fragmented um in in chicago where i, I live well where i invest um the way it works is um, having access to the VA hospital. So there's one, uh, the basic Brown VA hospital, which is like in downtown Chicago, and there's a, a Heinz ha 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 VA hospital in the suburbs. If the veterans have access to those locations through the uh, 
train the airline that those properties are optimal. And so my goal would be finding like a small multi-unit, like apartment complex, 12 to 16 unit near um, access to the train so they can get access to, to help and services at the VA hospital. Mm -hmm. And so awesome. that's what I'm just looking at right now. Right, right. Yeah, that, that's something that's near and dear to my heart as well, as far as like, I, I think that um, you have to give, uh, you have to give people who've been through something, you got to give them something to do. Uh, that's that's one one of the biggest things I find is really important, and uh, in, and I, I think that we've got we're leaning really far recently in society towards you know like everything. The only way to get past your problems is with like hugs and stuff like that. And and the different veterans that I've been around, they're not huggy people at all. <laughs> so so it's like you know I think you need to use a different strategy. Like I was thinking like uh, you know have like a, a like a basketball club you know at like set times and then you know have that mutual support i you know i'm i'm really interested to see what people do to uh to solve that problem a little bit more but the uh, VA you... has um, resources for them and so um with the high best program they they offer like vouchers for housing but they also have mental health counseling they have like um uh, substance abuse counseling substance abuse counseling they have uh social workers who follow them and mm -hmm. so they're able you know they they have that support through the VA hospital the VA system and so that's mm -hmm. actually a, a plus uh, partnering up with the housing authority and being able to help them out. That makes perfect sense. And uh, we we met via the uh, the meetups that uh, are generally through LinkedIn. Is LinkedIn the best way to reach you, or do you have a website or something like that? So I have a a, a website called classnoteinvesting.com, and um, that has information about um, my my vision and long term planning for for the uh, homeless veterans. And also LinkedIn. There's Claudia Becerra class of LinkedIn. And that just be the way to reach out to me. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I have something else to say to you in the camera, which is if you look somewhere down there, okay, there's a podcasting microphone in the way. Down, way down there, there's a red button that says subscribe. And if you hit it, it turns gray. And that's better because that means YouTube will start paying me for these videos instead of me paying for these videos. So please do take a moment and hit subscribe. Uh, uh, other than that, um, well, I guess I should tell you that it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And it just means that my videos might, keyword is might, show up in your list of suggestions. But your suggestions aren't usually in the way anyway. Most people just search for whatever they're looking for on YouTube. It's not actually just browsing for all sorts of stuff. But uh, thank you very much for staying up this late, uh, Claudia. It's, it's late over there in Germany right now. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. You take care. <laughs> Bye. -bye.